Okay, so I'm just going to be doing a video of my. Uh, this is my finished uh, Google Play Radio now. Um, I've just finished it. I finished most of it a couple of days ago, but I've just been doing some changes to the code. Um, that was t that was to update it so it allowed the uh, the Love Tracks um, auto playlist, and I've also put on options to configure the play mode and the repeat settings. So it's now possible to have it play uh, randomly, and uh, when it gets to the last track in the queue, it'll well depend on whether it's on random or linear. It'll either go back to the start of the queue or pick a random track to move to, but it won't just stop when it gets to the end of the queue. Um, so let's have a look at the front panel. Um, this is the LCD. You'll see it there; it's powered up, but it's a, just a standard um, black and white display. And here there's the uh, the button and encoder panel. It's got six uh, little tactile push to make buttons. Um, none of this front panel is uh, actually like, labelled or identified what it is or anything. I originally did plan to do that, but I just thought it looks better when it's cleaner, <coughs> like this. Um, so I've got this uh, this encoder controls volume, and pressing it turns power to the amplifiers on and off. On this radio, that's not particularly useful, but if you had, say, a headphone socket or a line-out socket fitted, which you'll see there is space on the board to fit one of those if you wanted, then that would be useful, so then you wouldn't have to have the amplifiers powered up when you were using your headphones. Um, this encoder controls the cursor position for the LCD, and pressing in selects the item that's currently highlighted. This is the back button for the menu, and uh, you can't you see it on the video of it works, it goes in with the black acrylic but you can notice it's different in real in uh, real life. This is the display button, this toggles between the now, now playing and display and the menu display. This is the last FM love button, or Google Play thumbs up button, or both really as it's configured. Um, yeah that's just the equivalent of putting the thumbs up or loving in last FM. Uh, that's play pause, stop and next track. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way it's turned out, really. Um, uh, it's I tried to go with the um, like the 1930s uh, sort of radio style with the um, this is an aluminium mesh rather than a fabric mesh, but I still think it looks pretty good. Um, you can still see the speaker bracket a little bit through there, but it's not too much of a problem. Um, so, look on the side. Uh, this is just a. Uh, uh, it's the layers, two layers of six mil plywood, either side, and then three layers of uh, six mil flexible plywood, on either side. Um, this is just spray painted with matte black spray paint, and it gives quite a nice effect with the, with the uh, grain of the plywood as well, I think. And the front, back, and uh, the base of the uh, enclosure. It's just uh, done with uh, clear acrylic lacquer. Then on the back, um, this would usually be in there, this back panel, but I've just taken it out just for just to show this. Um, on the back, this you can't see it very well in the video, but there is clear acrylic in there. And uh, I, I use clear so that way you can still see the stairs LEDs on the Raspberry Pi. Um, and of course, this is the back of the Raspberry Pi. You can maybe just can't really see it in there actually. Uh, I don't really have a light or anything I can put in there. But uh, this is the main power um, input. This is um, yeah, it's just power in and a switch. Under there, you maybe just be able to see there's a, a board with a, a fuse on. Yeah, which is a really difficult place to replace for, to put the fuse for a re uh, replacement. But uh, this is the back. Uh, the gold, like the copper coloured board. Well, yeah, it is copper. But, and yeah, the copper strip board you can see in there. That's um, that's for the front panel, and you can see the LCD PCB just above that with the little uh, strip board, breakout board on there. Um, and there's the speaker bracket there, which mounts the two speakers on uh, on these bolts that come through from the front of the the case. And there's Two amplifier modules 
there, one for each speaker. And all this connects to the main board through either these ribbon cables or these terminal blocks here. Um, you can, I won't be able to show you very well, but there's also another board under there that this USB cable plugs into. And all that is is just a board that takes 12 volts from the main board here and converts it to 5 volts for the Raspberry Pi. Um, yeah, uh, it'd be difficult to explain everything on the main board really, but it is just an art, um, an Arduino. Uh, this is uh, that's another DC DC converter. There's a lot of these level shifters on here. Um, you can see one there, uh, and the rest of them are under that hot glue down there. Um, this is all the audio circuit, audio circuitry around here. That's the digital potentiometer that goes powered directly from the Raspberry Pi. Um, behind these headers you can see there's just a relay which controls the amplifier power. Uh, these two potentiometers they set the contrast and backlight brightness for the LCD. Um, I think that's pretty much everything that is in the back of there so I'll just um, power it up and show you a demonstration of the of the UI and the sound quality. Okay. So this is the uh, this is the screen that's uh, displayed when the radio is first powered up, and here you get options to view the queue, the current queue, play queue, view playlists, uh, music library, and into settings. Uh, t for browsing the music library, it's um, it's first organised by artists and to accommodate like large music libraries, uh, the artist selection is done by um, letter of the uh, like first initial of the artist and then that shows you yeah so everything begin, begin with E then just by album and uh, and song and this uh, yeah this uh, this encoder would be volume so um, it does actually go very very loud actually. Um, it usually you don't really want to go higher than about 40 or something. Uh, well the volume range between 0 and 64 which is the decibels of attenuation which is the volume level is uh, 64 is 0 I'm talking about 64 minus the volume level is the decibels of attenuation that's applied by the digital potentiometer. So right now it's so at 5, it'll be playing 59 decibels of attenuation, which... Is that even... <laughs> I'll have to look at the day sheet for the digital potentiometers to check that, but I'm sure that's how it works, and how I've coded it to work. Um, so yeah, on this, uh, on this display you have the name of the track, the band, the album if it's set, otherwise that'll... If it's an unknown album, that'll just be blank. Same with artists as well, actually. Playing, I mean, it's not just playing. Um, linear is the play mode that it's in. So in linear, it'll go through a play. Well, it goes through the queue, and the next thing in the queue is the next thing to be played. And it'll do that until it gets to the end of the queue, where it'll either go back to the start of the queue and carry on again, or it'll just stop playing. So you can pause this, and you probably heard that quite loud click here get there, and that's the. Uh, that's the amplifier's been turned off after the after it's paused. Um, that was initially to get around the pulse audio issue that the Raspberry Pi has, and I won't go into that. But you can read about it on the on my blog. Uh, I've probably mentioned it in more detail in another video. Um, but yeah, you don't get it when you restart playing, so that's not too bad. Um, this is the last FM love button, so if I just press that. I've got a feeling that I've already that is our, that song is already thumbs up on Google Play, so I'll show you on Last FM and see if that see if that works. Let's refresh that. Um, I'm guessing I have already thumb, uh, given that a thumbs up because it hasn't actually came up on the Last FM. So, and this display button this toggles between the current playing and uh, whatever you were last on on the menu. So I'm trying to find something I haven't. I'll pick something that's not very good. That, that was a very good album, so I'll probably have thumbs up most of that. Alright, let's try that again. 
Ah, here, there we go. So now one last FM you see on my recent activity. I love to invite you in the song of life. So it does actually work, it's just last FM won't show it if you love something that you've already loved. Which makes a lot of sense really. Um so yeah, you can go back to the main menu and uh, just go into settings. Then if uh alright, so in the settings menu you've got four options. Reload library is uh, Essentially, that will it reloads the library. When you power the radio up, it goes to the Google, uh, the, unofficial, the unofficial API I'm using, and it takes uh, a copy of the. It creates a Python dictionary, uh, which is basically the the library structure in basically how you browse it. It's uh, artists, album, uh, a track, and creates a, a dictionary of dictionaries like that. Um, I mean, it does the same, a similar thing for playlists. <clears throat> and basically, what Reload Library does, it just does that again. Uh, that's useful for, say, if you made a change, you uploaded some music from the music manager, and uh, you don't want to, re you don't have to p power cycle the radio. You just hit Reload Library, and it would make those changes. Uh, toggle Play Mode. That changes between linear and, rep and repeat. I uh, know it doesn't change between linear and random. That's it. Yeah. So now it's on random now, so if I go back to, uh, I'll go through the rest of the options. Toggle repeat, what that does is, um, it's enabled by default as well, just for the sake of ease of use really, because most of the time I would want that on. Um, what that does is, if you are playing a song that's at the end of the, it, it's only really effective in linear play mode as well, but when you get to the last song in the queue, it will, instead of stopping playback, it will go back to the start of the queue. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, toggle scrolling, that toggles uh, whether tracks should be scrolled to last FM. It would still update the current playing track and it would still love tracks if you wanted. Uh, but it just wouldn't uh, scrobble them to you, so it wouldn't record, last FM wouldn't record that you've listened to them. So, if we go back to the queue now. Uh, so, this is the queue. Uh, everything that you play will get added to the queue and right now there isn't a way of clearing the queue um, I, probably add, uh, I probably should add that actually that would be quite useful I'll maybe add that to the settings menu um, so yeah the current playing the cursor's art now can move to the current playing mode which is the sound of life so in linear mode if I press the next button it, it should play spirit but if I uh, just check what the saying is I can't remember what I said that to. See, if I set that to linear and just go back here and do next track, it should play Spirit. Yep. So now if I just go back there and do toggle play mode to random, uh, and I'll just go back and see what's next in the queue. So, so usually in linear mode it will play uh, Tegan, I, I, I'm not sure what that should say because there would be a character where that question mark is. I'll go into that in a minute. Um, so if I play, press next now, it'll just play a random song from. Yeah, there we go. So that wasn't the next song in the in the queue. That was yeah, a few songs back. Um, yeah, uh, I haven't planned on actually to mention anything like that, but it's probably good that it has. Kind of, um, if you have music that has special characters in it, like a lot of these, uh, Kadokan and Kanji, um, <coughs> they'll just come up as question marks because the LCD can't display them. I think it actually probably can display Kadokan, but it definitely can't display Kanji. Um, I'm actually not even sure if you can display kanji on these types of Hitachi LCDs. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I even... I haven't actually looked at the Arduino library I'm using to drive it, but I'm not sure what character set that actually supports. I've only ever needed to use it with, with you know, just plain ASCII, which is what I'm using it with now, so... I probably could update this to show um, at least Katakana, and that LV81 was probably a something with an accent on. Um, but yeah, that's the only the problem, main problem I've got left with it now. Um, 
Yeah, problems I've had with it. Actually, can maybe just see something there. Sometimes when you go back, uh, oh, it's not going to do it now. It's not going to do it when I want to show it. It doesn't work. Oh, this is annoying. Yeah, there we go. Sometimes you'll get the last, the last element of the menu coming up at the top of the menu for some reason. You're not actually able to select it. But, yeah. Um, I think I know why that's happening as well, but it's not too much of a problem really. I'll probably fix it along with something else, I won't just try and fix that. Um, but yeah, I mean, to be, to be fair, the last for bug fixing it's pretty easy, and all I need to do is log in over SSH to change this. Um, I think that's about it really. Yeah, and you can see another play mode change random. And of course, when you pause the music, it does ch uh, this changes to pause as well. Um, oh yeah, amplify power. That's so it's basically just, it's the plane behind that. But uh, you can't hear it because it amplifies. Uh, I don't have power. Yeah, I can't think of anything else. Oh, playlists. Uh, this just lists playlists along with the. Thumbs up playlist, which is automatically generated. Um, yeah, I was being stupid before. I was waiting for the um, the API to be updated to support this again, but it actually turns out that thumbs up playlists are now expected to be uh, calculated, uh, well derived, generated. One of those general words on the uh, the client device, um, which in a way kind of makes sense. Yeah, sort of. Um,